Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Commentary's Magic Stream on today. No. Friday, October 22nd, 2020. Are you sure that's what today is? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm, as always, Grand Pauls. I think she's right. We're not in the right order. Dude, microphone. The mic. <laughs> Big cheese. Our cat and Ivory Starlight. These two were supposed to be in different places. What are the other two? They just seats. It's fine. I'm exactly where I belong. And we're here to have a good old time. Ara, uh, what's our stream content for today? Live from Ciderfest? Live from Ciderfest, that's right. Live from Ciderfest. It's Friday night! No, it's good. Uh, we are actually here to do something that we've been excited about for a while. Um, haven't had the chance to attempt this yet with us, um, but we're glad to have several of you here in person, as well as more individuals watching on Twitch. We will try to keep an eye on the uh, chat feed to see what's going on with that. This is the first, and hopefully not the last, NLPCCG Design a Card Panel. So, those of you who have played the My Little Pony Collectible Card Game 4, or may be vaguely familiar with it, know that Commentary is Magic currently produces print-and-play sets for this game. And so far, it's been a lot of fun, and we've enjoyed it, but we'd like to give you, as fans or viewers, a chance to make your own mark on this game as well, and to help us design cards that will be released in future supplements for this game. So, it should be a lot of fun. Um, Ara, how, do wanna, how do we want to start with this? Well, the first thing to talk about here when we're designing a card is just top-down design versus bottom-up design. And I'm going to let you get up on your soapbox here. All right, physically well, up you, on the soapbox. you can't see, but my feet are resting on a soapbox beneath the table. Trust me, it's fine. <laughs> so, top-down versus bottom-up design. Who in the audience is familiar with what these terms mean? You know what I mean? Yes. You want to explain them to people? Yes. So, literally, from the top of the card down, or from the bottom of the card up. <laughs> Flawless. Good answer. Absolutely now, now, correct. Figuratively, it's about the concept of who the character is, what their characteristics are, is top-down, which is, incidentally, on the top of the card. And then the others are starting with the mechanics and figuring out what character will fit those mechanics. That's exactly right. Yes. That's exactly right. So yeah. many games will favor one or the other, but a, a well-balanced game or one that is going to have broader appeal is going to use both. There have been numerous cards that have been printed over the course of this game's history, both by Interplay and Commentary as Magic, that feature top-down design, where we started with an idea of a character something they did in the show, some personality trait that they have, some characteristic about them, and tried to figure out how we could replicate or best uh, exemplify that in mechanics within the card game. We've also had numerous cards that we knew mechanically needed to do something for balance purposes, for functional purposes within a set, and then we had to try to apply flavor over the top of that. Sometimes these things click, and it's very easy to come together. Other times it's a little bit harder. Um, but we have some examples that we can show of cards that have been designed by the community before, I believe. Mm -hmm. So who recognizes any of these cards here? Oh yeah. Double R's seen these. Yep, have seen those as well. So every single one of these cards has been designed or suggested to be designed either by members of the community or sim before we started actually designing full sets. Uh, and you can take a look at a card like Lyra and Bonbon bon that has um, a couple of unique effects. It's eccentric. Uh, when it enters play, you get to put a friendship counter on one of your friends. And when you move this card to a problem, you can move another one of your friends with a friendship counter to the same problem. That seems like that could have easily been top-down design. They started with this idea of Lyra and Bonbon bon fused together. One has to go wherever the other goes, and then made mechanics around that. Yes? Is that here? That's not like a proto version of Trap. Uh, well, it's more like what Wildfire and Holly Dash used to do in the premiere set, uh, where they would conga line to each other. Because this one doesn't make them bigger, it just allows them to go one after the other. Okay. Wonderbolt's Runway was designed by one of the members in uh, the East Coast. Yeah. I believe it was the Cambridge group. Mm -hmm. And that one was definitely... Johnny, right? That was Johnny? 
It yeah, was so Johnny. Pegasus. No. Pegasus. Pegasus eggs. eggs. Yes. So was the working title for that card. We we have the card Wonderbolts Runway, but instead of picturing the runway with the Wonderbolt trainees, picture it as a nest of hatching Pegasus eggs, assuming Pegasi hatched from eggs. <laughs> Think the scene from Alien where they go into the nesting grounds. Maybe with less face hugging and more just regular hugging. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what Pegasi you've been hanging around, but uh, I think... Well, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Then you have another card like Lacking Lesson Plans. Lacking Lesson Plans served a very specific purpose uh, because it was coming in the meta immediately after Tempest Shadow was printed and it mechanically needed to do certain things. The flavor could be applied to a number of different things as well. I'm going to be honest here. The flavor on Lacking Lesson Plans phoned in. But it worked. It did. So this, this is a the lacking lesson plans is a great example of bottom up card design. We knew exactly what it needed to do. The stats for this card were quoted verbatim by a playtester. They were essentially applied directly to the finished card. The only thing that changed here was they needed flavor and some kind of flavor that vaguely fit was applied. Yep. Now, out of all the card types, I think I know what the answer to this is, but which one would you say is the hardest to come up with flavor for? So, for, for, rec for record, do you want to give people okay. an idea of how much work you do on flavor? Okay. Um, so, every all of the flavor since Fond Memories uh, was me. Fond I, Memories? Sorry. Friends Forever. There you go. Uh, so, Interplay printed the set, but... I was selecting flavor, giving names, picking images, giving flavor text. Uh, they did all the layout and all the printing stuff. Uh, since then, it's been me. I do the art, the layout. I have a very complicated Python tool chain to arrange all the images and a bunch of other nonsense. So. You may, I, have, you may have seen his art streams before. I have seen my art streams before in my box of grinded ponyos. So if you have a complaint about the art, remember, it's just his art. <laughs> <laughs> it was just my and our side. audio wave just spiraled all over the place. The yeah, is not allowed to hiss that close to the mic. <laughs> there you go. That's a little better. Okay. Uh, so we've given some examples. We've talked about top-down versus bottom-up design. Let's walk through how this is actually going to work this evening with the cards that you're going to help design. It's about the process! Thank you, Luna. <laughs> so walk us through the process. Okay. So the next slide, uh, I've got nine different pieces of art. Uh, ones that I think would lend themselves fairly well to a card without too much sitting here and fooling around with like art and repainting stuff. Um, and we'll take input on which art should we use. Uh, once we've decided on art, we need to figure out what kind of card we're designing. Is this going to be a friend, an event, a resource, or maybe a problem? What about a troublemaker? It could be a troublemaker. Could be a troublemaker. Yeah. Uh, it's unlikely to be a main since those are more complicated to design. Uh, once we figure that out, I'm going to fire up Photoshop, see if my machine decides to crash today, and <laughs> Fingers crossed. try to put the art into a template. If anyone has an ice pad <laughs> to put the surface on, um, we might need one at some point. I really, I really should have got the 16 gig model. You can't run Photoshop on 8 gigs of RAM. It just doesn't work. You can. Just don't run uh, anything else. D Diamond Song adds Cries and Yona main. Cries and Yona main. Well, I've got good news for you, Diamond Song. There's a Yona picture on the next slide. It's not going to be a main. Sorry. It's okay. Maybe, um, maybe you should have been here to convince us in person. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh! And before um, anyone asks, Hith Rock. Uh, asking about Trixie, will get Trixie removed from Fond Memories? One Trixie card removed from Fond Memories for every time someone asks about Trixie. And yes, you can go negative, and we do accrue that I'm, I'm, into future sets. How many well. are even in the set now? Uh, That's think, classified. Yeah. So classified? You can go on Ponyhead right now One and view. look. <laughs> you sure can. Okay. Who's ready to see some art choices? 
Okay. Is it Trixie? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are no Trixies. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> uh, so once we put the art in the template, we need to discuss what does this card do. Um, then I'll fire up, I'll kill off Photoshop, switch to InDesign, we'll do the layout of the card. And get the card published in a future release? Question marks? Not question mark. We'll do it. It'll be good. We'll release it. For, for uh, reference, these cards will not be released in Fond Memories. Fond Memories is basically already set. So, mechanically speaking, we just don't have room to add more cards to that set. Dear Princess Grandpa's, there are too many cards in the Fond Memories layout. Please remove three. Dear Princess Grandpa's cards. God, I love cards. <laughs> Dear Princess Grandpa. All right, so who's ready to go for some art choices? Let's go for some art. Yeah. Woo! Oh. oh yeah, he's got some good ones up there. So there's the ones that I think we're gonna go with. I want to see if I'm right without saying which ones I think they are. I totally don't remember Rainbow Dash Fire and her lasers. What are you talking about? That's the pie episode. It is the pie episode. It's Pinky's hallucination. Good memory. Ah. Very good memory. And, and, That's and right. We already like have half of these. We have one request in Twitch for the for the Yona picture. Really? I don't Yeah, I really. Don't, I don't believe you, you that we haven't already used that rarity. What? This rarity? Yes. No. Pretty sure we haven't. I yeah, actually, but, I don't think we have either. But, but like, tell me that's it's not, such a great one. Tell me that's not a great picture. <laughs> the the pinky squeezing rainbow dash gap could be a good problem. Mm. So extra tight hugs. Well, that's basically what that's actually. I have names for all of these things that are very facetious. I think that one actually might just be labeled like extra tight hugs. We've got uh, Mayor Please over here. <laughs> that's a good one. And this one's named Lower Skate. What's, what are the baby cakes named? Uh, I don't remember what. Double Trouble, I think. Okay, so let's do this in the best way we can. For anyone on Twitch, go ahead and type in your favorite choices for which art you'd like to see uh, designed first. For everyone here, let's go uh, left to right, top to bottom. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just raise your hand as we come to that card. So, rarity with roller skates. Roller skates. Okay. Double trouble. Baby cakes. No. Okay. Pinky and the guards. One for Pinky and the guards. Okay. Uh, extra tight hugs. With Rainbow and Pinky. No. Okay. Yoda. My fellow. My Yoda. fellow Yak Yakistanians. Cursed just said three. Three. Uh, so Cursed, Cursed wants guards. Pinky and the guards. Okay. okay. So that's two for that. Uh, Mayor, please. Diamond has four. Okay. Which is the okay. extra tight hug. Extra tight hugs. That's fine. Uh, baby Twilight. Babified. Babby. Babby Twilight. You're just in time. We're picking art for a potential new card here. Point to a good image. Oh, I heard right. Twilight's involved, so we're going to do a cam that idea. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. There's Twilight haters out here. <laughs> Smolder, too cool for school. That's actually what that one's named. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. And remind me how to pronounce this. Wabnyar. Uh, Wab half. Wab Wabnir, Wabnir hat. Rainbow dash backwards. Okay, there we go. We got one for rainbow dash backwards. Okay. Uh, I think I think extra tight hugs takes it. So we got extra tight hugs. Pinky and the guards. Uh, my fellow Yak Yaki stands and. It's just rainbow dash. Yab backwards. Yabnir. Wabnir. Wabnir. Thank you. Wabnir. Rainbow dash. Rainbow dash. Yeah. Rainbow okay. Dash. So we're doing. Someone Pinky spell that. We're doing Rainbow Dash. I think we're doing. Hmm. Okay, Pinky. Okay, Pinky and the guards. Or I'm sorry, uh, extra ten hugs. I mean. Okay, Pinky and the guards okay. plus one in Twitch. Yeah, yeah that was Curse. Okay, so we got two uh, extra tight hugs. Oh, so, uh, so, two. So, yeah. So since we walked in late, what are we voting on? Like, what's the kind of the thing here? This is the art we're going to start with, and you're going to help us design a card based around that art for the collectible card game. So whichever art you want to see on a card, because they will be printed in future sets, okay. Um, okay. this would be the one to choose. Okay, I get it. So, I think we actually yeah. have three. Go ahead, shut up. It's good. Hugs. Hugs. Yeah. Hugs. I think that's actually like four for that one. Four for hugs. Yeah. I, I think hugs is taken. All right, we'll do hugs for the first one, and we'll do another one after that as well. So, this is a pretty open card. 
in terms of what we could do for top-down design. We know Pinky likes hugs. We know Rainbow no longer has a spine. Um, <laughs> or has multiple spines now. They're just much smaller and broken into <laughs> fragmented pieces. So we're starting with top-down design. Who here is familiar with the mechanics of the collectible card game? Who here has played the collectible card me. game before? Me. Okay, we have some people who have played the collectible card game before. Who is not familiar with the collectible card game? I, I, That's, I played like once when it very first came out. Totally fine. So in the collectible card game, the primary goal is for players to play friends and move their friends around to problems so that they can solve those problems. When they solve the problems, they get points, and the first person to get to 15 points wins the game. So I would say, based on this, that this is probably not going to be a card that's going to encourage or, or cause a lot of moving, as it does not look like Rainbow is going to be moving anywhere anytime soon. Lose a movement turn. <laughs> That's a possibility. So it could stop a character from being moved for a turn. That's a good choice. We've seen several cards that have sent characters back home. Um, Rarity with Sweetie Belle when they're going back through. Um, the uh huh. Exactly. Yep. That's one. And we've also seen Stand Still. Actually. There seem to be a lot of ponies that enjoy making Rainbow Dash not move. Yeah, because like all of the movement cards are, are, are Rainbow Dash. It's almost all as if stuff. that's all she does. When blue fast goes fast. Yep. I'm, I'm shocked and appalled that blue fast would go fast. So who? T so that's one option we could do. Whoa there, Nelly. Another option we could do is Rainbow looks like she might be out of commission for a little while. When you're playing friends, your opponent might try to get rid of your friends. Um, so that would be another option is this is a card that could remove a friend for one reason or another. Well, let's, let's also think for a moment about what kind of card should this be. Um, should this be a friend? Should this be Pinky? I think it should be a problem. So I don't think this is going to work real well for a problem because of the way the art is arranged. We can try it, but a problem would not be my first instinct for this art. So uh, simply because a problem wants to be very wide and a friend wants to be kind of tall. It, it, it looks like it's focusing on the action rather than the characters of the setting. Right. So this looks like an event. Okay. This, this does look like an event or possibly a resource. Yes. Sure. I can see that. We've seen hugs done as resources before, and we've also seen rainbow restrained we, as events yeah, before. Yeah, extra tight hug. Um, as a, as a strength, resource? Yak strength hug is a resource. A resource. Interesting. It's a condition. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that works as a resource. Yeah, because yeah. pinky ain't going nowhere. A so, loving hug is never a problem. So I like your comment about the fact that this art looks like it's focused more on the action rather than the individual characters themselves, and the background, like you say, is present but relatively generic. It's not trying to draw the uh, viewer's eye in there. So this is probably a good part of the events. Her eyes are going it's, a, it's visual, it's uh, active, it's apparent that there's movement that's going on here, or lack of movement in, in Rainbow's case. So, do we want to try this as, do you want to put it to a vote as either like an event or a, or a resource for now? And see kind of where we're at? Who thinks this should be an event? Who thinks this should be a card you play that does something and then that, that's all it does? Okay? Who thinks this should be a resource that does something while it's in play? Okay. So, I've never played the game, so what is a resource? Have you played any collectible card games before? Have you played Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, anything along those lines? Uh, well, Yu-Gi-Oh, when I was about seven. Okay, got it. So, this would be like a, a Magic card that you would play on one of your monsters that would have a persistent effect as long as that card was on the monster. Okay. That's what a resource would be. Okay. 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 We have uh, a Cursed wants an event, and Diamond wants a resource. Okay. I think, I think we have an event. I think yeah. we're going to have an event. But the thing is, I definitely agree this should be event. However, I'm worried this is going to become too much like stamps. Okay. So, so that's something that's, we can that do is a very the, valid concern. Yeah. That's yeah. something we can do in the mechanical aspects of this. So instead of, say, making another friend not move, what if this took a friend of yours and shoved it over to where an opponent's friend is? Oh, and that's, then, a, that's oh. an interesting idea. And can't move for the and rest then, of the turn or something? A, and then stuck a minus one power counter on it. That actually sounds brilliant. Okay, so Pinky is so excited, she rushes over, grabs Rainbow Dash, holds her in a big old hug. Locks her down. Locks her down for a little bit. I could see something like that working, sure. We know that 
Rainbow normally would otherwise be zipping around. Yep. So it would make sense to have this be uh, a neat effect. Now, in the game, there are six colors that are based on the six main characters of Generation 4. So we've got Rainbow Dash, who is blue. And um, blue is generally associated with moving characters and going fast. We have Pinky, who is pink, who likes to do all kinds of random things. She draws cards and she throws parties for ponies. Applejack gets big. She gets swole from farming all day, as is, <laughs> as is right and proper. Right. Uh, Rarity uh, generally likes to wear a lot of hats and is uh, annoying for people to be around. <laughs> yeah. Just like Rarity. Uh, <laughs> Fluttershy is uh, OP and should definitely be banned. Uh, no. Fluttershy is a good pony who likes having a lot of critter friends as well, a lot of smaller uh, friends to help support her, so that's very thematic. Uh, and Twilight usually has good affinity for magic, a lot of events, and things like that as well. So, those six colors make up the most of the game. If we're making this an event, we could make it an event that has color, meaning that it's going to work better with certain characters that, that like to play that color. It could be an event that doesn't have a color, meaning anyone can play it equally. Or it could be an event that has multiple colors, meaning you need to commit even more towards two particular strategies. Now, if you had to look at that, or can you zoom out for a second? If you had to pick any two colors this could possibly be, I wonder which ones we should choose. White and orange. Definitely white, orange. white and orange. Definitely Cursed white. is uh, suspicious of how well the art fits. <laughs> is, is, he, is he implying that we did... Almost like this was planned. Like, <laughs> no. No, this is... This is not. Um, part of this is just I have a really good eye for proportions and how things will fit on a card. This is what doing this for four sets does to you. <laughs> Help me, please. <laughs> He's okay. He's trying. They so, won't let me go. They keep me in a closet and leave me when I don't We do go. not keep you in a closet. No, they keep you in the basement. <laughs> that's not that's not the thing. We don't keep you Hey, there he is. We don't Sugar keep coat! Keep Sugar coat. Okay. No EQG. Oh. <laughs> we don't keep him in the He's basement. Said, we keep him in the shed. Well, what about that one time we had something show? So I will sneak Pony Sonata Bacon into Sonata. art whenever I can. Pony Bacon and Sonata are okay. Yes. And Pony Sonata, yes. Yes. Only Pony ponies. ponies. Well, the Pony Sonata is a Pixel Kitties piece of art. Uh, there is That does not happen in the show art. And yeah, that's true. It is unlikely that we were wondering if that was a cue, a clue for a future episode. Uh, yeah, that would have been, that would have been back in the day. Funny. Okay, so back to the mechanics of this. <laughs> this card, if it had <laughs> colors, would likely be pink or blue. Yeah, or pink and blue. or pink and blue, or maybe it just doesn't have colors. Or if someone thinks there's a reason it should be something else, you could go for that as well. Oh yeah, just zoom right in on the face. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. Now we're doing the overpaint. I'm just saying, at this angle, that eye looks like a zit, and we should pop. Oh, <laughs> thank you for that thought. <laughs> That's horrifying. But so, so like, if you just think about what this card actually does, well, if we go with the the general idea of what we were saying of both moving and restricting, those are blue and white things. They are. But the characters here are blue and pink. So how much are we willing to bend flavor or, or bend mechanics to try to align flavor or vice versa? Have characters ever broken outside their normal colors before? Have we had pinkies that aren't pink? All the time. Sure. Have we had rainbows that aren't blue? But generally white. <laughs> There was this one time, and Rainbow was very unhappy about it. She was in a dress. She was in a dress, and she was told not to move. Well, there were multiple times, because there was also that time with Zephyr To be fair, and, there is a certain white pink, uh, white pinky that y'all showed earlier. Was that in the list? That was. Yeah, Remix Master. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I always forget that card's white. Yeah, it is. So, we have an idea of a concept of mechanical design now. Um, where this is a card that is likely to move one of your characters somewhere your opponent already is, and then is likely to apply some kind of a detrimental effect to that opponent's character temporarily. Hugs don't last forever, sadly. I wish I wish they did. I wish Pinky would give me eternal hug. 
I think that's a bad fan fiction, so we're not going to go with that. I mean, Pinky will give you a hug for the rest of your life. Yes, she will. So, case in had, point, you had mentioned who had suggested something about minus power? Did someone say something about minus power? I don't remember that you're in that, but. That was, that was me, but I'm, I'm, just throwing, I'm throwing stuff out here. Minus one power counters are weird. Minus one power counters that was are weird, you. but temporarily reduced power is something else. Minus power counters. I don't know. There's been one that was printed really? in New Dawn, and there's another one or two that are coming in Fond Memories. Oh, but not this one. Yeah. But not this one. For temporarily minus power, that was a what pink thing that? back in Premiere and kind of disappeared. It was. Well, if that's the case, the minus one would be thematic. It would. It would be something that could be done in pink. And it would be interesting to have a card that is pink, where pink doesn't normally focus on moving its own characters a whole lot, but it has some synergy. You have Party Mare, who gets to move herself every turn. Exactly. You have DJ Pony Fill the Beat that lets you pay less when you move characters. So it's not outside the realm of pink to, to yeah. have a card that does that. Especially yeah. if there's usually some kind of a, a restriction on it. Blue is the card that just said, or blue is the color that says, I just want to move everything forever. Pink says, I want to get value for moving something, or I want to move things in specific circumstances. So I think this could be a pink event. The action is being done by Pinky. Rainbow's just the object of Pinky's actions here. So we have some wording ideas from Cursed. Okay, what's that? Um, immediate, so meaning you can play it basically at any time. Um, choose an opposing character. Move one of your characters to that card's problem. Neither of those characters can be moved until the end of the turn. That could work. That could work. Now, that mechanic... It has to move to where the, where the opposing friend already is. So you're right. not moving an opposing friend. But that's not what's happening here. Yeah, so in the art it is that your character... Well, Pinky moves over to Rainbow. Right. And then stops from moving. And then Rainbow can't move. Yeah. The one thing that's a little tricky about that is the most desirable way to uh, keep your opponent's characters is going to be at their home. When you're at your home, you can't be confronting problems, you can't be scoring points, you're just kind of there resting for a moment. But you can't move your own characters to your opponent's home. It's like a safe space for them. Um, you really can't get anything of your own into that section. So this would stop characters that are already at problems from moving, and there are some colors that like to do that. Blue likes to move its characters from problem to problem, so that's an option. Are there other ways that we could maybe flavor this? Ivory suggestions? Mm. Or so, audience suggestions? Yeah, because it seems like if, if you cause their uh, one of their friends to not move from a bottle. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of where they wanted it in the first place. So it doesn't sound like that's a big detriment. To it them. could be like a like yeah, because in that way, it could be used as a way to uh, either a uh, take that friend out of a place where they could actually solve a problem. So mm -hmm. to take that friend out, they can't do that. Or you could bring them into a side where like a troll maker is, and they could that could perhaps and that friend could end up being uh, affected by it. That's an idea. And I like the way you're thinking about that is friends, characters, they're used for a couple of things. They're used for confronting problems and they're used for trying to break through troublemakers that are like a temporary barrier that's put up. It stops people from being able to score points normally. What if we changed the detrimental effect from the character having less power to the character not being able to contribute their power towards those two things? So they couldn't contribute their power towards face-offs or confronting problems. Because they're too, bu the too busy hugging. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so, Rodash doesn't look like she's able to do much. Right, until the end of the turn. So it's not that she's weaker, she's just not able to, like you said, do anything. Yeah, so, so that would be like immediate... Um, yeah, if you want to do that wording, uh, either way works. So it's like move, move your problem. Um, uh, opposing character there can't uh, doesn't contribute its power to uh, face offs until the or face offs or confronting. Face offs or confronting. Face offs or confronting until the end of the turn. So we could have, like you said, immediate <laughs> burst of lotus. What is this? <laughs> burst of this is a silver bordered card. Don't ask questions. Why are we working on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, what are you doing? Why? Get this out of here. What are you doing? Well, he was trying to get to the... Uh, uh, I think you're going a little too much into the zone. The reference. Yes. 
So, immediate, move one of your characters to an opponent's character's problem. I actually kind of do like the wording of um, Cursed, which is you choose an opposing character. Okay. Um, and then you move one of your characters to that card's problem, and okay. then neither of those characters... Well, so in this one, it's neither of those, which I think is also fine. So neither of fine. those characters contribute uh, power to face-offs or confronting until the end of the turn. Sure, that seems fine. That seems, that seems reasonable. Pinky's kind of busy herself there as well, so that makes sense. So we're thinking this is probably a pink event that's going to work at immediate speed and perform this effect. Uh, yeah, so it could be it could be either just pink or pink and blue. Um, I don't I don't know if you'd want to restrict it. That um, yeah, because like the decision to make a multicolor uh, card is generally like it's quite powerful, and so you kind of wanted to restrict it to certain types of decks. And I don't know, like, are we fine with any pink deck having access to this? Like, I think it's interesting both as a control tool and actually as a aggro like. Um, uh, tempo, a tempo tool. Sure. I could see a situation where uh, you're just playing this to save you some uh, some actions. For example, your opponent is going to confront a single problem. You can use this to basically deny them a point by moving one of your characters up there and choosing their largest character of the problem. Nothing happens as far as confronting. It goes back to your turn. Now you're in a position where you're up there at that problem as well, and you're able to con uh, to contribute towards confronting or, uh, or fighting a troublemaker again. Yeah. The other thing that's tricky about multicolor cards is sets are finite in scope. We could, in theory, just keep coming up with card ideas and card ideas and card ideas yeah, and just man. keep adding them to a set and never stop. And then the set gets ludicrously large and it makes... Thousand card sets. Enjoy ordering that from uh, Make Playing Cards. Yeah, no. <laughs> It obviously makes um, things like set rotation, where you have a format that only uses the newest sets, more complicated to balance when you keep having more and more cards that go in there. So we try to restrict sets to about 150 cards a piece. And most sets have a pretty general formula for how many cards of each color or each color combination are going to be in that set. Multicolor cards, cards that have two or more colors, are usually restricted to two in that particular color combination per set. Maybe three, sometimes. So, like Cheese was saying, printing a multicolor card, you want it to be impactful, you want it to be exciting, because there are far fewer of them than there are cards of a single color. Single color, you can have over a dozen, if not more, um, in that particular color per set. So, in this case, who thinks that this is a card that would be good enough to do in a single color, and who thinks it's an effect that would be exciting and powerful enough that you'd want to do it in two colors? So, single color, mono pink. Okay? How about multiple colors, pink and blue? Okay. So, people think this is exciting enough that they'd want to see it in both pink and blue, and that's fine. Because there are already a lot of other cards that synergize with that. Blue has a lot of traveler stuff. Your characters can get bigger from moving. Griffins get a lot of synergy with when you move your own characters. Pink can have either calming or eccentric, which can be even more uh, tricky. So, yeah, I can see this is a multicolor card. Yeah, for, for chat, we did have a vote for Mono, but... Oh, okay. no, she said, oh, scratch that. Uh, she also said the name's right there. It's uh, Pinky Strength Hug. Pinky Strength I Hug. Don't, is, that, is that an event name? I can't... Does anyone remember what the uh, dial that there was any dialogue going on here, like right either during or right before? I think it was squee about as loud as Pinky possibly could, uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, for for that stuff, like um, Ara has all the episodes and looks through. You can go back and try and find it if you can. Uh, oh man, we're getting a free show. Did you know? That's right. This is what you need when you do this. Now you have to go find the... It's very close to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. I need to watch all this again. Oh, it's like one of these frames, yeah. Frame by frame. This is my life right here. This is what Pony looks like to me. 
Stop right there. You nope. can pinpoint the exact moment that her spine breaks. Into <laughs> no. Ready? Nuzzle, nuzzle, nuzzle. One of them is much more okay with this. Rainbow does not want. <laughs> Did it already? Okay, there we go. There it is. All right. So that's what was going on in the scene right there. But we were looking for the audio, though, right? Yeah. So she she said, I, I kind of need to get going. So she's trying to go somewhere. Is, go to the Wonderbolts Academy. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you. Okay. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy for you, and I'm gonna let you finish. But the first, well, Pinky gives the best hugs of all time. Of all time. <laughs> So, so what are What's what game text are we at right now? The I game. know that we were leaning towards. So yeah, so the game text we have is a modification of Cursed's. It's immediate. Choose an opposing character. Move one of your characters to that card's problem. Ne um, neither of those characters contribute their power to uh, face-offs or confronting until the end of the turn. If we're doing this as a monocolor, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, no, as a dual, dual, color. dual color is what I meant. It's immediate movement. It only moves to where an opposing friend is, though. It does. Pink has had location-restricted yeah. movement before with cards like Aso Rally that moves when an opposing character moves, things like that. And the ability to not contribute power towards face-offs, definitely pink. Cardboard yeah. box right there as well absolutely makes sense. So good call on making it two colors. I think it fits very well with both of those effects. So how many action tokens should it cost? One. One? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so everyone who thinks that she should never design cards, <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> wow. Wow, you have fans. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond Song says it should cost three. I, I think that's a little steep. I think that might be a little steep. Well, if you're, so what, if you're unfamiliar with the game, action tokens are a little bit more complicated to balance. It's the resource that you gain in this in this game. It's like the money that you spend to play all your cards or to take any of your actions. Unlike most other card games, you can save your action tokens up turn after turn, so they don't go away at the end of your turn. And you'll gain more action tokens as the game gets closer to finishing. So you start off gaining two per turn and end gaining as many as five per turn. So... Action tokens are something that you do need to spend for just about anything you're doing. Um, they're used to move characters, they're used to play cards, they're used to draw cards, they're used to do activate abilities, all of that. Save for a few cards that were zero tokens, but still require colors. Correct, right, where they still need them to do something. Yes? So if you're gaining more tokens towards the end of the game, I don't know if one token wouldn't be as steep, because if you're gaining more tokens, this seems like kind of a... Card you play towards the end to stop somebody from, so like your opponent from solving a problem. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I don't, this, I don't think this would be an early use card mm. if you were to get it. I like, would say it's an early use card anyway because there's still the fact that we're gonna put color for a dual dual color uh, limits. So they so like say if we did like two for like blue and pink. Sure. So they would somehow need to go through turns and put. Uh, Put out two uh, two friends or resources that are worth blue, right? Then I'll get like two worth of like something in pink, and that could take that's going to take multiple turns, most likely. So you're going to have to set up. Now you bring yeah. up an interesting point where your opponent is going to need to be doing things, kind of setting up their board already before you're going to play an event that disrupts them. You're not going to play an event most of the time if it's not going to do anything. At the same time, the further it gets in the game, the more likely it is the opponent's going to have the cards and the resources to overcommit to anything that they do, anticipating that you will have something you can do that will slow them down. Where a card like this is likely to be most useful is where your opponent is playing by the margins, where they're hoping that they can get in there, spending as few tokens or as few cards as possible, and getting a point or advancing their game in that situation. So playing this towards the middle of the game is likely a good compromise. 
What do you see? Uh, D- Diamond Song says, see, I take an absolute Discord approach when it comes to card designs with the three cost, <laughs> over the- over costed things. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. C- Cursor takes a middle of the road uh, 2 AT, which is how much it costs to move a character normally. Um, with 3-3 three, three wreck, that, I'd, I I think I'd rather see 2-2. Two, two, I, two, pro- two, I would probably also but- rather see 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, the big difference there is that 3-3 three, three require... Like, the difference between 2 and 3 is actually pretty big, because especially in a uh, blue-pink deck, or pink-blue, because generally you're going to have two power friends. Those are generally the most common. Um, and so this, uh, being at 2 locks it in. You just need a single other friend and a flipped main, and you can play it, rather than needing, like, two friends or a, di- or a more expensive friend. Sure. So I think 2 AT is a perfectly fine place to start with this card, and we can see um, in in final design how it how it lines up. But I think 2 AT, 2 requirement, and then some amount of power that would be appropriate. It's not an event that's going to dramatically change the face of how the game goes, but it can delay your opponent by a turn or more. So for events whose impact is usually less their power has a tendency to be greater, so that if you flip it in a face-off, which is a mechanic unique to this game, you want to flip a high power. Yeah. Um, like, four is, is kind of like the... the I think it's a little bit high, what we do now for events. We'd probably write this down as a three. You think so? I think so. I think we'd put it as a three if it was one cost, and I think we'd put it as a four if it was two yeah. cost. Mm. I mean, this is pretty high impact. It can't, but it's expensive. Like, it's you're paying for it. Sure. And I suppose these aren't colors that are normally going to run control, so that's probably okay. Yeah, it's not like we're printing a board wipe for the next set or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was only conditionally impactful. It, it, it is con- conditionally, but, like, that condition is pretty common. Like, that's the thing. Like, there's some conditions that are like, that never happens. And then there's conditions like, yeah, people, uh, people tend to confront delete. things. Delete. Well, yeah, most happens. decks tend to confront things. And tend to have friends at problems or characters. Those. I think we said characters, right? Yeah, character. Yep. And Flavor Town from Colt Fury. That's just the default. It's the best flavor text. We've also never actually had that flavor text on the card. I think. Yeah. Go ahead. I think there there is no. I think there is art like show art of of Colt Fury. Is Somewhere, there? I think so. Yeah, uh, I think oh, it, I think it's Gordon Ramsay. No, the Gordon Ramsay. The there is Gordon Ramsay, definitely. But yeah, it was in the background of that episode where the very Mickey Pie went to that uh, Indian restaurant, and they all came, brought those people all the crowd over. For them. So possibly. So season five. So what's the the next thing? Uh, well, we need the names. The, the rarity. What about the rarity? Oh, the rarity. Okay, so that's a good point. When Gameplay exclusive promo. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Those three words <laughs> are the worst words. Sorry. So we're not going to make this a gameplay exclusive problem. No. <laughs> That's not how this works. Your life. We haven't had one of those since, like, For anyone not CG. familiar, a gameplay exclusive promo is a card that is printed exclusively for distribution at in-person tournaments. And that is the only way yeah. you can acquire the card is at that tournament itself. Yeah. And... Interplay ended up reprinting all of the gameplay exclusive cards as non gameplay exclusive, uh, as promo exclusive. Sort of. Yeah, because it was bad. Yes. It was bad. Now, they printed the ones that were really annoying to get a hold of. Ah, uh, yeah. They didn't print the Rainbow Dash dressing in style. Yeah, and like the breakdown, not breakdown, whatever, the breakdance. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. No one should play that card anyway. Uh, so we need a rarity and we need a name. Rarity, uh, when we're dealing with multicolor cards, they come in a couple different flavors. So the rarities in this game, not the pony rarity, but how hard a card is to find, are common, uncommon, rare, super rare, and ultra rare. Ultra we have a, rare. Yeah, we have a vote from Cursed for being uncommon. And uh, with, with, the, with the print and play, this isn't about... Um, how likely a, an individual player is to have it in a constructed deck, because you have all, all the cards. It's the benefit of uh, print and play. It's uh, more about uh, limited play, so draft or uh, sealed. Like, uh, if a player gets this in their sealed pool, how like disruptive is that? Is that something that should never happen, or almost never happen, or like is it is it pretty okay to happen? Um, and so cursed is like some either uh, uncommon or, or rare. Uh, common is probably a little bit too. Uh, 
likely to see. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd run this card all the time. Yeah, especially in limited, like blocking yeah. a confront. There's also uh, the fact no, that we've we also we never... cannot print this at common because, because it's it is a multicolor color card. Yeah. Jinx. Uh-huh. Okay. The only Mul multicolor common would be a vanilla. Uh, there are no multicolor commons. And we specifically want to avoid printing multicolor commons, not because they're too powerful, but because if they appear too frequently and you choose not to play those colors in a limited environment, you it hurts. Yeah, it hurts yeah. you a lot in, in limited. Yeah. So I think uncommon is fine. And for names, um, congratulatory hug or. or uh, Wait, well, so we have the, the default of like pinky strength hug. Uh, is there is there in, something better? Can anyone else suggest yeah. a name for this card? Let's go back to the card art. Unwanted affection. Un, we have. So you said unwanted affection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have unwanted affection. We have pinky strength hug. More names. Shout them out. I, Come on. I feel like Pinky would say squeeze. So just pinky squeeze is something I feel like she would just shout while logging in. Pinky squeeze. Pinky squeeze. Pinky squeeze. Like Hulk smash, but yeah. pinky squeeze. But it's pinky squeeze. Yeah. Yeah. In all caps. <laughs> oh yeah, that would have to be all caps. All caps. Pinky squeezing hug. Pinky squeeze. <laughs> Not that squeeze. Yes, I was like, wait, why? Not is... that squeeze. I'm going to claim infiltrating on this one. No. <laughs> Other suggestions. Uh, I keep wanting to think of something involving the something of a ring that's just spawning, but I, I, wonder, I feel like it's too warm. I wonder if it would be too warm for us. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, we we remember the audience that we're trying to appeal to as well. Yeah, we, we don't do Fallout Equestria right here, sorry. Dang. Jeez is upset eternally. About I'm upset Next too. Set. Next set. Next set. We don't do EQG. <laughs> we don't do Fallout. What? What else why did we invite? Switch? Why did we invite them again? <laughs> oh, one more squeeze. One more squeeze. Okay. Yeah. It's like she's like, oh, because like, at the end of it, it's like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> what does chat say? Uh, we got. Uh, admittedly, making a pun on squeeze somehow is compelling. Uh, that was cursed. Uh, we have main squeeze. Uh, We're shipping main, them. Main squeeze. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean that. I didn't even get that. Okay. That was yeah. That's a that's a joke. Uh, we tend to avoid that. Yeah, it's a joke. Except she's serious when she suggests that. <laughs> Are we shipping them online? What do Diamond. you think? Of course she is. <laughs> Look, Diamond, just because you want an explanation for how Zip ended up with pink and blue hair does not mean that you get to come up with the canon for that in Generation 4, okay? <laughs> That's too dark of a blue one. And there's also red in your main too. That's true. That's true. What do you have? Farewell Hugs? Farewell Hugs is another one. I, I kind of like the main squeeze one. I think we could get away with that. Uh, no. Okay. No. People. Are I liked. I liked the pinky squeeze. Pinky squeeze. Yeah. yeah. What do you? What does everyone here think of everything that's been suggested so far? I like the pink, pink, pinky strength hug or maybe pinky sized hug. Okay. Pinky strength hug or pinky sized hug. You got one for that? Thoughts? Well, she uh -huh. has to be turned to a Z if you're gonna make it actually like the words. Yeah. Pinkies. <laughs> um, yeah. I, like, I like pinky squeeze. I just feel like that's hard to do. If you could put like, I mean, you could also do it like in like a, all caps are at an exclamation point, it'd be like an incredible hole sort of thing. But I don't know. I like the pinky squeeze. Yeah, I think, I think the, I think the people here are leaning more towards pinky squeeze. We don't always have to be very foolish. That's fair. Okay. I, I will hope well the squeeze. Right, I feel so what, like do we, what do we call this thing? The number one we're missing, like you know, to put the squeeze on someone. Ah, uh, and that is the perfect place to adjust the flavor text for that, because if there's anywhere on cards that we will fit puns like just as as hard as we possibly can, it's right there in that flavor text line at the bottom. I will go full meme lord in the flavor text. So I agree. This there are a, no rules. This is a great Actually, there place are, but... to to put a pun like that. We can make a note for that. <laughs> the flavor we'll text do, is I don't just think we'll do the flavor text here, just because that can take a little while to yeah. do. But that's okay. So here we go. You made your first card. Congratulations. Yay. Woo! Yay. 
that mean I have to turn in my prize? Huh? No. No, you still get your own no, card. You get your own personal designer card. Because I want C- I got the CCG prize from everybody. Yes, you did. So while we get set up here um, to go to the next card, let's talk a little bit about how really set minutes, how set design has changed with print and play. Well, so most I, collectible card games to be opened on have machine. physical product hmm? that they that use, booster packs, boxes, decks, I mean, whatever it happens to be. Again. And for a long time, the Milo the Pony collectible card whatever. game also did as well. Play took it out. This. No, don't reopen. And play stopped producing new cards around, what was it, 2018, 2019? 2018. 2018. Yeah, I think it was 2018. Yeah, 2018. Uh, and that was the last year that had a new physically printed set by Interplay that came out. Well, the community is still here. People still like ponies. Who still likes ponies? Yeah! Still like, yeah! Still like no. ponies. Who still likes games? Yeah! I still like games. Yeah. Hey, look, there's a target market for this. Why would we want to stop having the game be supported? Are you saying you like ponies? <laughs> there you go. So, Commentary as Magic stepped up and started designing sets and continuing to support the game through tournaments. We've developed several sets of our own. We've made them available through print and play. Print and play means that anyone who likes to play this game can go online and print these cards out either on their own printer at home or have them professionally printed through a printing service and they're legal for play in tournaments. So if you go to an event at a convention or you have a local meetup or you go to the National Continental Championships every single year, you can use these cards and everyone has access to them. It means that the normal barrier to entry that you have for playing a collectible card game, which is usually how much are you willing to empty your wallet to do so, doesn't really apply anymore. It still applies to older cards, and we don't want to destroy the secondary market for card games. People have spent a lot of money and a lot of time trying to find their favorite cards and build their favorite decks, and you don't want to just tell them that those cards are worthless and that their effort isn't spent uh, or you know didn't amount to anything. So we don't reprint cards. We only want to print new cards, and we don't want to print, um, uh, or, or we don't want to make it so that older cards lose their value. So we need to be careful with how we design things. Yeah, Pat, no, no power, no like this. It's this yeah. card, but strictly better. Some some power creep is going to happen because that's what you have to do as you progress. It's no one a, a friend that's just a two o two vanilla four zero four rare. Go away, yeah. full steam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rip full steam. Yeah. I will still, if I ever have an excuse to run a 404 Orange Friend, it's going to be. In Harmony, steam. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be full steam every time. Because you got to. The original, yeah. You got to swag. Right? Was there a foil of that? <laughs> no, there was no foil. No foil. There should have been a foil. Yeah. Shameful. Shame. Uh, 606, you are. Now, what print and play does allow us to do is something that's a little bit unique to physical games, and that is. We can correct mistakes that we make in terms of balance of card design. So who's ever played a game, any game, card game or otherwise, and you came across a rule or some interaction or something and you thought, boy, this is really unfair. I wish this was a little different. Anyone ever encountered that in a game before? What did you what did you run into? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Tell us. What did you run into? I there there are a lot of a lot of issues. Um, uh, there's like an infinite uh, loop, and I think uh, this thing bail or something. Okay. Um, where you, like there's there's just this. Cycle of part of card for the entire order that it doesn't end. Uh, so, not the most balanced element of the game. There's also it's also like not specified. Um, oh, it isn't called out exclusively or anything in the rules. It's right. See, so so it, it's it's actually I guess it's not necessarily a balance issue. Just the rules fail to account for this interaction. Got it. Um, Sometimes just just saying. I mean, sure. Yeah. Sometimes designers try things, and a lot of times those things work. But my not girls. Grogar. Grogar. Like my girl. Growing confidence. Um, Legacy Leech. Huh? Legacy, Legacy Leech. I mean, Le- 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 why did you say it? Why did you say the card? The original Cloud Chaser. She kind of fell off. 
She kind of fell out of favor. She did fall out of favor. Don't worry, we'll see her again in stick form soon. <laughs> um, so when a game has physically printed really cards, you don't want to try to errata those cards to, to do something different. You don't want to say, this card printed says one thing, but it actually does something different. It gets really confusing. It creates bar barriers to entry for newer players. It Nine different versions of Marvelous Chapeau. It's it's just really hard to keep track of. But through print and play, when there's no or very little cost, see there you go, there's your cloud chaser in the next set. When there's no or very little cost to fixing a card, being able to push the design envelope a little bit farther, being able to try new things or, or explore new design space, even if it means taking a risk that it might not be the most balanced card ever, is a little bit more okay. Because if something does get out of control, it's much easier to fix. Legacy Leech was a big problem. Anyone who was at Continentals this year saw this card, saw what this card did, saw the impact it had on the meta overall, and said, this isn't fun, nothing else can beat this, we need to find a way to fix it. To We've removed it from the meta, it's been banned from the formats yeah, right, right now, we're working we on fixing it to reprint it that will limit its power and we'll be able to reintroduce it later. That's not something that could be done with a commercially printed set. You'd have to recall every single card out there in everyone's private collection. It, it, it just can't be done. It can be done in digital games. Look at how often Hearthstone does errata for their cards. All the time. Like basic cards, like now I can totally revamp the set. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. <sighs> Print and play falls part of the way in between that. So, with that being said, it's okay to try new things with set design in print and play as long as we do still try to keep things balanced, knowing that we'll keep an eye on it and nothing's set in stone. There can be corrections that can be made later. And this applies to all game design. You don't want to try to pigeonhole yourself into a situation that you can't correct later if things turn out to not be balanced, because the instant you hand that game to 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 or 100 other people that you don't play with regularly, I guarantee you one of them is going to find something or do something that you've never thought to do. It will just happen. And that's why playtesting is also important. Okay, have I ranted for long enough? Are we good to go with the next card image? Uh, well, we, uh, we, don't, we don't have time to yeah, do another card. The time. I have a question on that. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, so where does playtesting fall in this process? So, during set design, and this is fine, we'll open it up to Q&A session here. Uh, during set design for print and play sets, we'll usually start with an initial wave that has, what would you say, about half, a third to half the total number of cards that'll be in that set overall. Somewhere in the, we've Roughly. We've them with, yeah, a little under, well, yeah, a little under half, usually. Okay. Usually those cards are going to be at the lower rarities, the things that will appear more often in limited formats or drafts, and we want to get a feel for how the, the one or two mechanics that the set is really going to focus on are going to work. So, for example, in Sequestria and Beyond, which was the set based off the NLP movie when that came out in 2017, the features were that ponies could transform into sea ponies, so that was an interesting mechanic, and ponies traveled around a lot, so there was encouragement to move your characters. Those mechanics were printed on a pretty good number of the cards in that set. And so that might be what the first wave of a set looks like. We'll introduce it to playtesters, we'll describe what the goals for the set design are, and ask them to try experimenting with these cards, adding them to either existing decks to see what could replace cards that are already out there, or build new decks that maybe they haven't tried before because something else caught their eye. So that's how playtesting starts. It continues from that point on, adding more cards to the set, making changes, taking in feedback, and focusing on things where we think mechanically it might be problematic. Other questions? All right, well, it turns out I broke my Python chain. Oops. <laughs> Computers. Because all the, he does is mess with things. This it's is like his system, thing. This is the system I use to go from... Get out the way. Too many things here. InDesign renders these things at 600 DPI with the bleed. Uh, what goes into Ponyhead is significantly lower resolution. What goes into the layouts, the things that you can print, has to be a specific size and a range. The Python processing chain I have 
automatically does all the arrangement, all the resizing, all the packaging. Once I do the render out of InDesign, I run that script, it coughs out the four PDFs and the three zip files. One click. I'm not about doing things by hand. He doesn't have time for that. I don't have time. Ain't nobody got time for that. If you can automate it, automate it. Yeah. Yes. This I have to do this too many times to even think about doing this by hand. So if you've gone to the Pony Programmers panel, I've given the extensive rant about that side of it, uh, but I'm not going to get into that here because ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> nice. Uh, any other questions about uh, card design or the card game in general? Anyone? Anything on Twitch? Uh, my fellow Yak Yakistan should just make both mains Yona main for the rest of the game. Love it, Donnie. Have fun with that. Definitely. That Definitely. sounds okay. like a silver border game. Yes. Yeah, so how do you make sure all the cards get tested? Bug people to test? Bug yes. Bug people to test. Well, I mean, so... And some do get missed. We're going to be honest. We yeah. don't... We cannot exhaustively test every possible combination, use, archetype, deck list. The, it, the combination is just huge. Our experience as playtesters will guide us towards things that we think might be problematic. Um, sometimes we can see interactions between cards ahead of time and just be like, before they even get like to this stage someone just looks at them and goes no, no, you can't print those two things in the same set or you can't print this because this thing two sets ago or you know printing this means that next set there's this big list of things that you can't do yeah but there's over, there's over like 2,000 cards now in, the, in total it's a lot it's, it's like if you look at the, the combinatorial explosion of things that can happen like you can't look at everything but like uh, we have some pretty like Good players uh, play testing and like the public beta where it's like everybody can go and look and so like most things get caught yeah something actually got caught in the the public play test that i don't think we saw that one no not uh, at that no point. we did not we knew that it was a card that could potentially do something but we tried through our exhaustive efforts to to find a way to break it and couldn't do it and then a week after it got released to the public <laughs> someone turned around and is like hey if i do this this and this it does this cool thing and our response is so, just Law. So, so we have a, we have a great pun uh you know like you, you bug people to test um so we have uh curse is imagining a changeling qa team testing the cards who wants to join the, the bug QA people. team of changelings? <laughs> is the QA team made completely of changelings? Yes, it is are now. Are they changelings or changedlings? <laughs> I hope they're changedlings. He likes thorax, in case you can't tell. He has a plush on order. Like I have a plush on order, and when it gets here, I'm going to take it out of the box, take a picture, and then punch him in his stupid face. <laughs> you are not going to do that. He, he, will. he totally will. That. I will totally do this. Yeah, don't do it. To expand really quickly on that as well, um, as we've played the game over the years and have also worked on designing or playtesting the game when Enterplay was still doing it, we know there's certain words to look for in cards that are notoriously more dangerous than others. Point. Score points, gain action tokens, draw cards. Anytime we see this language, we want to be very careful and make Lose sure that we pay attention to it. Lose when this tokens. card enters play is a very big one we have to be that's, careful of. Because that's honestly a good who, point. Who, like, who remembers Interdimensional Portal? The keep putting things the two play card over combo. and over again. Yeah. 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 yeah, you want to be careful having a potentially repeatable effect. Yeah, we've sometimes we'll look at a card and say you can't print that is when this card enters play. It has to be when you play this card. Right. It just, just has to. Little tweaks like that. So, other questions? I think we're we're about wrapped up there. We're good? Yeah. Right. Okay. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for helping us design the next card. This will go in the MLP CCG Discord, uh, basically whenever I can get the Python pipeline working again. So in about an hour after he smacked his computer in the hotel room. Yeah, if you are not on the MLP CCG Discord, uh, I have a handful of community cards which have links to uh, the Discord, the Reddit community, and a couple of other places, as well as a 
set of uh, contact information for Commentary as Magic. We are, as always, Commentary as Magic. I am, as always, Grand Boss. Big Cheese. Our cat, and Ivory Starlight, who's currently passing out the cards. Thank you, Ivory. Thank you. Manning our social media, as always. And we'll see you all next time, question mark? Next time. Do we have a stream next week? We do have a stream next week. Yeah, next weekend. See ya. You'll get to hear us talk about Cheese's stupid deck in Harmony.